Now, as we reported last week, the eastern Ukrainian town of Bakhmut has become a prime target for Russian troops. Ferocious fighting is underway there, and Kyiv's forces are getting a boost from an unlikely source. Russians themselves, volunteers, who have come in to fight on their own uh, against their countrymen and four Ukrainians. Correspondent Sam Kiley has our report. Caesar is Russian. He's taking a break at a monastery from fighting Russians in nearby Bakhmut. It's a relief from scenes like this, Bakhmut's Ukrainian field hospital. He's been defending this Ukrainian town from Russia's most intense assault along an 800-mile front. <laughs> Artillery duels and trench warfare have almost destroyed Bakhmut as Russia throws its army at a bid for victory after months of defeats to the north and south. I love Ukraine. Defending Bakhmut against his Russian motherland is a religious uh, imperative for Caesar. The fighting is very brutal now, he says. There are very few prisoners. When you see those Russians in your gun sights, what do you think and what do you feel? I believe that these people who have broken the law of man and the law of God, I have no pity for them. I take them prisoner if I can, but most often I just have to kill them. So have you killed a lot of your countrymen? A dozen and a half. This is the remains of a Russian Orthodox monastery. Now, for Vladimir Putin, the Orthodox Church is absolutely central to his vision of the Russian world. For some Russians, though, that's a world they don't want to live in. Indeed, they don't want it to survive. Ukraine's Orthodox Church broke with Moscow three years ago. This is all that's left of a rebranded Ukrainian Orthodox St. George's Monastery after nine months of war. Putin says that he's defends uh, traditional values, yeah? <laughs> and that's uh, the result of his defending. A ruined old monastery. Vinny has been fighting in Bakhmut for weeks against mercenaries from Russia's Wagner company, many of them convicted criminals. It's obvious, he says. When private companies hire criminals and convicts, imagine, a man kills once and they put him in jail, then he kills a second time and he becomes a repeat offender under the law. Then he gets let out of jail and given a gun. That's not a person, that's a beast. After a former Wagner deserter, Yevgeny Nushin, was murdered in a video that was praised by Wagner's boss, Yevgeny Prigozhin, Vinny is in no doubt how he would be treated if captured. It'll be the end, 100%, but it'll just be more painful. The Russian Legion does claim to be in the hundreds, and it says many more back home are trying to join Ukraine's army. Alongside their Ukrainian allies, the Russian Legion is focused on the battle for Bakhmut, the aim of the war after is more ambitious. He says, I'm doing my military and Christian duty. I defend the Ukrainian people. And when Ukraine is free, I will carry my sword to Russia to free it from tyranny. New warnings to take cover in reports of more casualties and damage in Ukraine as the country faces a new round of Russian missile attacks. Take a listen to what it sounded like in Kyiv a short time ago. The sound of air raid sirens blaring across the capital. Ukraine's president says his air defense forces intercepted and destroyed most of those Russian missiles. The latest attack appears to be targeting both infrastructure and residential areas. This is the aftermath of the strikes in the Zaporizhia region. At least two people were reportedly killed there. The cities of Kirovi and Odessa both report no electricity and no running water. And like thousands of other people in and around the capital, CNN's Will Ripley spent hours in an underground shelter as those missiles flew towards the capital. You see some of them in the metro station. Will now thankfully uh, joins us now live, now back above the ground. But, but take us back to what it was like, Will, uh, when you're hearing those air sirens overhead, that barrage of missiles uh, striking right across a uh, Ukraine. Yeah, it, you know, it's certainly uh, an ominous sound when you hear uh, air raid sirens 
Uh, we had just finished a live report from this location, and you heard the sirens very clearly. I grabbed my iPhone and shot that video that you just played, and then we had to pack up and move downstairs to the underground uh, shelter uh, that they have um, in most uh, large buildings across Kiev. So people who might have been at work or people staying in various uh, hotels probably went down to the shelters in those respective buildings, but there were a lot of people, thousands of people, who had to basically go underground into the subway stations, and it was either either standing room only or a lot of people were kind of sitting on the stairs or just sitting down on the floor uh, because that's all you could do. I mean, and you have limited, uh, you know, water, bathrooms, food, and this is several hours that people are down there. So clearly uh, not a comfortable situation. Uh, a lot of people, uh, yours truly included, uh, grateful to come back up and breathe some fresh air. Uh, and, and even though the majority of these missiles were reportedly intercepted, uh, the Ukrainian officials say they need a decision from the United States states on Patriot missile defense systems. They've been calling for them for months now. Uh, and not just Patriot systems, but other uh, advanced systems manufacturing countries like Germany, because the power grid has once again been affected. Here in Kyiv, there are now uh, scores of people that are without electricity uh, because the power system is unstable. The same is true in the east, in Donetsk, and also down south in Dnipro Petrovsk. And people who are living through this say, while it is unpleasant, it could be much worse.